on Android sounds like a joke. Right. But this, this is no joke. This is Blender on a device no one expects. No fan. No graphics card. No mercy. I wanted to see what it could do, but somewhere along the way, I stopped testing iBlender and started testing reality. So yeah, apparently Blender now runs on Android. I mean the actual real Blender, not a stripped down gimmick. Naturally, I had to test it, but not like a normal person. I went full chaos mode so, in this video, I'm gonna test viewport FPS, sculpting, physics simulations, Evian cycles rendering, spin support, scene stability, and even a 46 hour render that nearly fried my phone. But the real question is, can you actually use it? Is it just a toys or can it do real work? So because of my curiosity and I'm in love with Blender, I took it a little further, just a tiny bit further. I tested a scene with 17 millions vertex, full render with volumetrics and geometry nodes, install complex forest add-in and do a comparison with my old potato laptop Seems so heavy it made my phone cry, blender crashes, bugs, glitchy rage, and 46 are render on a phone. Yeah, things got ugly. Okay first, let's meet the combatant. My loyal HP Lite book with Core i5 4th gen CPU, AMD 8750M with 1GB RAM GPU. A GPU that came out when dinosaurs still used USB 2.0. It's paired with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. It's a beast already. I don't think a phone can crush it. Let's see. And here is my phone, basically a pocket-sized RTX Titan with better battery life. This is Blender on Android version 0.0.4. Link is in description. You can download it. It's Android build made by the community. Absolute legends, guys. They did great job. It's not a newer version of Blender for 0.5. It is Blender 3.6, which is powerful enough to get the job done. As you can see, it supported the S Pen 2. That's insane already. I did default rendering test, and I was shocked to see a phone rendered within 1.6 seconds. At this point, my old laptop questioned its existence. Ah, shit! Had to go again. And begged to give up because I will be rendering the same Blender project on this old potato laptop and a modern demon phone. <laughs> Guess who Women. won? All right, bro. If you ever wondered if a phone could actually beat your PC in Blender, well, I tested it. And the results made both of these devices cry because it's full of disrespect for them. Everything is the same as PC version of Blender. The only difference is UI navigation, because you cannot normally zoom in or out without using the axe sizes and these Blender Zoom and Pawn button. So using mouse and keyboard is recommended to actually use it as the way you use the PC version. Now I build simple scene and test real time cycles and EV rendering. I will put my old PC side by side too to see the difference. <laughs> The viewport is surprisingly very smoother in Eevee. I did not expect this level of smoothness. It feels like a 120Hz refresh rate, so the Blender on Android seems to support it. The good thing, you can normally interact with your phone keyboard. This is dope, guys. All the process of adding objects and the overall workflow of this Blender on Android is completely exact the same as a PC version. As you can see, this is Cycles, run on a phone in real time, and it's very responsive than my laptop, I can tell. But there is something I noticed during testing. I found out Cycles denoising in viewport is not working for now. I mean for this Blender on Android version 0.0 point for so. This means you will need to set viewport samples higher to get clear viewport, but in final rendering denoising it works. It's very interesting, something heavy like Blender works in a phone. This proves pocket rendering soon might be possible because what you see here is phone CPU rendering. GPU rendering is not supported yet for this version of Blender on Android I'm using thus why cycles is kinda slow. But not as slow as compared to my ancient old laptop, we are going to see it very soon. Once GPU is supported, it's over guys, I will be rendering everywhere with zero lags. 
Now after the basics, it's time for a real showdown of opening same Blender project file on both phone and on my HP old book laptop to real test the stability of this Blender on Android. I will start rendering from simple sins to even more complex one to actually push the limits and found out what is possible and what is not possible. All this to just found out if this is a real tool or just a toy as most of Android 3D apps. But shockingly as you can see guys, in this simple scene in cycles rendering in a phone finish within 46 seconds completely stable with no crash. That is insane. Let's move on to this scene. This is what surprised me the most. The smoothness I feel in this is pure 120 hertz. It is so smooth that I wish you could see it, but I recorded in 30f so I can't show you here. But I'm surprised so much. At this point, we can do real work in Blender on mobile. Things like modeling is not a problem at all for what I see here, because this scene is clearly not a donut. And my phone has better viewport playback performance than my old book laptop. That mean I can animate smoothly in my phone using Blender on Android than using my PC just to get for FPS lags. Then I rendered it on both sides again to see if the first results were not just a glitch because how the hell does this for 5W power laptop be outperformed by a phone? Literally 5 to 10 watts power. I did both EV and Cycles test so let's see both results. Honestly I'm surprised by these first results already. I wonder what my old baby can do. But the phone have the render time again and an EV is completely disrespect because there is huge gap in rendering time. How is this legal? At this point, I had to check if my PC is okay. I think my laptop runs Blender on hopes and prayers. Then, I got curious how will it handle a real usable scene. So I go deeper into high poly mesh scene with multiple lights, actual shading. So I used Blender 3.5 splash screen blend file, which I downloaded from Blender official website. And yeah, the viewport was super smooth. But once I enter in cycles rendering, it was incredible shocking it did not crash. It rendered as fast more than my laptop could. It again rendered to times faster than my PC in cycles. <laughs> Here is what got my jaw dropped to the floor by the stability of this blender on Android. Once I enter EV real time rendering, it did not crash either despite it was laggy a little, but you can work with it. But when it comes to my laptop, it instantly crashed once I enter EV real time rendering. I tried again and again, a blender keep not responding and crashed with a matter of fact this laptop got 16 gigabytes of RAM and 1 gigabyte dedicated GPU memory. So I confidently confirm that my phone's blender is even more stable and EV than my old ass laptop. I love where the future is going guys. Bro, this part shattered me. I ran the exact same physics sim on both my old laptop and the phone. Initially at a 0.5 FPS on both. I was like, okay, okay, fair fight. It's a draw, that was cute. But then, I hit B. And that's when the phone said, step aside, fossil, this is my domain now. It blasted straight to over 80 FPS post B, like it wasn't running Blender, but was Blender. It didn't just handle the sim, it devoured it. Smooth, fast, calm, no thermal screaming, just raw confidence. Meanwhile, my loyal old laptop, my one sprout warrior, was out here wheezing, barely coughing out 45 FPS. Bro, it was holding on like it was simulating inside Microsoft Paint. It had that don't unplug me, I am trying energy. I decided to go deeper, putting a nuke in a blender mobile so I loaded this 17.3 million triangle scene which nearly kills my old potato. Well as you can see it lags as hell. I did this because I see so much hope on blender android I hope it will be smoother. Let's found out. Here is my pocket beast ready to load the scene and yes it 100% loaded the 17.3 million triangle scene. A few moments later. But it wouldn't handle it for that long, and my guy crashed. I got you, homie. At least the phone didn't shut itself down. I started reducing.
practicing geometry one million at a time. Until I found the sweet spot, and it was 14 freaking million vertices. After sculpting, rendering, viewport wars, and physics I thought I was done. But nah, I had to go one step deeper. I tried to render a scene worth 3.7 million vertices, geometry nodes, shading, reflections, volumetrics, compositing a scene so cursed, even my PC begged me to stop. Just when I thought the phone was unstoppable, it met true despair, PC. Render the scene in 3 hours while a phone rendered the same scene for 46 hours. The blender didn't crash, it lagged. It cried, but it survived. Ha! Gay! That's when I realized I need to do intensive tests just to find out what this cool tool got for us Blender Warriors with Blender at heart so. I know what I will be doing on it exactly, and I notice there are some things like volumetrics, real-time viewport compositing, and the depth of field in EV is not yet fully supported on this beautiful Blender on mobile. Yeah. I'm obsessed with it down to the core. I've already gone as far as installing the Blender Botonic add on it, and started building full vegetation scene on a phone, bro. Like if that doesn't tell you how serious this mobile Blender setup is, I don't know what will. I've pushed this thing far enough to say this with confidence. Blender on Android isn't a toy, it's just limited for now. And I don't even care, because what it already can do, it's insane on a mobile. I hope you enjoyed the video and answered most of your questions. Leave a like to a video, comment your thought about this, and subscribe for more. Let's beat the algorithm and share this video to our fellow Blender lovers. Also it helps support the channel a lot. Dock a keyboard and mouse, you're cooking. Have a good time, guys. So that was a f lie.